The anime begins with a police chase towards a white car. Both cars are speeding at full speed causing one of the police cars to crash. After that we see the driver of the white car trying to calm down the girl who accompanies him. Suddenly, the police start shooting, so the boy accelerates into a tunnel. Inside the tunnel, he tells the girl, named Angie, to throw some grenades that he had given her earlier. Angie throws the grenades, causing the patrol cars to crash and fall behind. However, they did not count on the BST tank waiting for them at the end of the tunnel. To understand what happened, let's go back a few minutes. We heard in the news about the mutation of a disease due to some side effects caused by a medicine. This medicine was intended for people suffering from insomnia, but over time strange alterations appeared. Until today it is known as blood of ores. At the same time a boy was drinking a soft drink. His name is Mai Liu, and he is the main character. He is accompanied by Win Kao. They both find a blood of ore in the street, who is scaring other people away and feeding on the blood of one of them. Suddenly, the security team, known as the BST, arrives. The BST officers manage to disable the blood iver with a soothing dart, and then beat him roughly while he is on the ground. Win Kao gets angry at the government for treating them in such a way, as he is also a blood of ore. After a few minutes, Angie arrives, to warn them that there are a lot of police in the area. It's caused by the protests people have been making against the pharmaceutical company that caused the mutation. My Liu is sure he has chosen a good day to rob the bank. At the bank, the three lock themselves in with several hostages, while covered by glasses so as not to reveal their identities. Win Kao threatens the hostages, asking a manager about the password to the safe. But the manager mentions that the password is changed every day, which Win Kao doesn't believe and continues to threaten. My Liu claims that he is not being lied to, as he is trying to crack the code with multiple combinations, to the point of finding the right one and passing the data to Angie so that she can open the safe from which only a little money is taken. Mai Liu tells Chi Fong, another of his companions, to wait outside to pick them up. The manager realizes that they are blood of ores and tells them that the bank is in charge of helping people like them. But Win Kao doesn't believe him and slaps him several times to shut him up. As they flee through the corridors, Win Kao complains to them for not taking more money if they still had time left. Mai Liu says that their plan was only to take that amount, no more and no less. Angie to avoid an argument between the two tells them to hurry up. Some notes fall on the floor and Win Kao stops to pick them up, unaware that from the toilets appears a boy who is looking for his mother. The boy sees Win Kao and Angie, so Win Kao aims to kill him, but Angie gets in the way to prevent that. Win Kao asks Angie to get out of the way as he has to eliminate him for seeing his faces. Angie wants to talk some sense into him by reminding him that he's just a kid. But Win Kao doesn't budge and threatens Angie to get out of the way. Mai Liu intervenes by pushing Win Kao causing him to shoot upwards and they start to struggle trying to get the gun away from him. Meanwhile, Angie sees the boy crying in fear. Suddenly, Angie has a brief memory of the blood iver that attacked the people in the street, which triggers an alarm on a necklace he is wearing. This signal called DGPS alerts the authorities, so Chen Fong goes inside to tell them to hurry. Once outside, Win Kao wants to leave Angie as he knows they will be found easily. Angie agrees to stay so that they can escape, but Mai Liu objects by throwing the money aside to distract Win Kao so that they can escape with Angie and leave the other two behind. On the way, Angie asks him why he did it, while Mai Liu only replies that he wants to be with her always. In the present, Mai Liu is outside the tunnel being arrested while surrounded by a tank and several patrol cars. The heist quickly makes the news, telling the audience about the capture of the four suspects who are blood of ores, who grew up in the same orphanage and one of whom is the child of peace. At the police station, Mai Liu is told about all the infractions he committed, while he maintains an attitude of not caring about anything. The officer gets annoyed, mentioning Mai Liu's father, who happens to be the director of the BST. Mai Liu says nothing and continues with his cool attitude, stating that out of all these charges he would get 15 years in prison, and because he is a minor he will get a reduced sentence, which he could pay with bail and social work. The officer gets annoyed and grabs him by the collar, asking if he doesn't feel remorse for the 15 people who died. Mai Liu is shocked to hear this, as he knows that no one died in the robbery. On the other hand, at a meeting of senior commanders, Mai Liu's father, called Mai Tenju, takes full responsibility for what happened. One of the senior officers asks him if he will resolve the situation, just as he did with his wife. Mai Tenju only replies that he will be satisfied with the outcome. Mai Liu, along with his three friends, are sentenced in a courtroom. They begin to doubt among themselves who did the murders, but they all plead not guilty. Once the officials show the evidence, the judge sentences the four to death. Mai Liu is taken to his cell, 
where his father is waiting to talk to him. Mai Liu asks if he came to mock him or perhaps to save him, but his father tells him he can't and mentions his mother. Mai Liu gets upset about the latter saying that he has no right to talk about her, and not to act like a father as he doesn't want to see him again. Mai Tenju grabs him by the wrist to burn part of his arm with her hand, while telling him that they are no longer father and son. Mai Liu falls to the ground as Mai Tenju retreats. At night, Mai Liu is transferred with his three friends to another prison, but in the middle of the way the car stops. The back door where Mai Liu was with his friends opens. Several policemen show up with guns and start shooting, emptying all the ammunition. In the past, Mai Tenju gives a press conference where he presents a product of his research called the Child of Peace. At the conference, a researcher named Shimon Guching appears next to Mai Liu as a five-year-old boy. Shimon announces that Mai Liu is half human, half blood of ore, and that he is her and Mai Tenju's son. Shimon gives diagnoses that Mai Liu has led a healthy life, showing no violent traits, believing that he will be the hope of humanity. Mai Liu wakes up in a cell surrounded by two other people. He notices that each of them is carrying a bag, in which there are clothes and weapons. To find out who the other two are, Mai Liu decides to check the bag of one of them, but is surprised, as the owner of the bag he was going to check gets up and cuts him down with a key. The noise causes the other person who was with them to wake up, to ask where they are. Mai Liu is released and remembers what happened before with his companions, when they were going to kill them, but one of the policemen decided to save them and throw a dart at them to put them to sleep. With that, he is sure that his comrades are alive. He returns to the present, where one of them asks his name and introduces himself, also mentioning the crime he did. Afterwards, a girl named Cho Ifen introduces herself, with the crime of fraud and finally, Lai Xin introduces himself, who is a professional assassin. Lai Xin manages to change and equip himself with his weapons, advising the others to do so. But the time is not enough as the door opens, and when they leave they realize that they are in a large cellar together with more prisoners. Suddenly, they hear a voice that seems to be Angie's, who acts as an announcer explaining that their death sentence has been lifted, but instead they will have to live and survive this place called Aori. One of the prisoners approaches her to subdue her, as he doesn't believe anything she tells him. Mai Liu tries to intervene, but the real Angie is behind him. The one who comes out to defend the fake Angie is Chen Fong who was also there, and he kicks the prisoner away. But the prisoner quickly gets up to fight Chi Fong. Mai Liu notices something strange about the necklaces, and asks Chi Fong not to do anything. Chi Fong listens to him and lets himself be beaten. A companion of the prisoner who fights Chi Fong threatens Mai Liu not to interfere. But to his aid Win Kao appears, threatening the other prisoner and feeling annoyed with Mai Liu as he wants to ask him several questions. Unexpectedly, the prisoner fighting Chi Fong dies after his necklace explodes. The fake Angie tells them that their collars were switched to prevent them from killing each other or trying to take them off. On the other hand, the officer reading the Mai Liu charges was informed by an officer about the death of Mai Liu and his three friends, mentioning that the BST had taken over the legal side of the case, thus closing the case. The officer found it strange that the killers did not leave such a trail, so he made a call, asking for a report on the death penalty prisoners who had been eliminated or disappeared. In Aori's warehouse, the fake Angie is dismembered by a monster that falls from the ceiling, revealing it to be an android. The monster starts attacking the prisoners, who defend themselves with assault weapons, but none of it works. Chi Fong is perplexed to see that the fake Angie was a robot. Meanwhile, Mai Liu manages to flee along with Angie and on the way they pick up Cho Ifen after more monsters appear. On the other hand, Win Kao sees the chaos trying to flee from the monsters as well, witnessing people taking their own lives before being eliminated. A group of prisoners create a bomb to open one of the gates, but are attacked by the monsters before throwing it. Chen Fong was near the place. He runs up to the bomb and throws it and manages to open the door and most of the prisoners manage to flee to it. While Mai Liu is cornered by a monster and when he was about to be attacked, he manages to activate his powers, avoiding the monster's attack as he flies backwards, seeing that it is now Angie who is in danger and goes after her to save her. Cho Ifen also calls out to him for help, and so Mai Liu pulls them to safety in an air duct. Also in the distance she sees Lai Xin, asking him if he needs help, but he tells her to leave as he'd rather entertain himself by taking out more monsters, which are killed by a sword and not a bullet from a rifle. After advancing a few meters through the air ducts, Angie warns the others that there are four paths and mentions that they could split up. 
However, Mai Liu prefers not to do so as they must stay together, an idea he shares with Cho Ifen. Instead, Mai Liu asks Angie for the gun to take out the bullets and spread them in the four directions to know which one to choose. While doing that, Angie and Cho Ifen talk about Mai Liu being a hemomancer, which Angie didn't know. Mai Liu wonders why they brought them all there, if there will be more hemomancers like him and why there was a clone of Angie outside. Meanwhile outside in the cellar, the prisoners are surprised to find that there was nothing behind the door that had been blown up. Being cornered, some of the Hemomancer prisoners decide to use their powers to stop and beat the monsters. Mai Liu and the girls make their way out of the ventilation duct and into what appears to be an office. The office appears to have been abandoned quite some time ago due to the amount of dust that has accumulated there. Mai Liu deduces that they must be on the third or first floor, so for their safety he decides to search the place, looking for weapons or food. Mai Liu moves on and notices that the place was apparently evacuated in an emergency because of the mess it is in, noting that things like photos and players were left behind. As he continued to investigate, he found the map of the building hanging on the wall. When he looks at it in detail, he notices the date of completion of the building which should be in two years, leaving him surprised as the building looks like it was abandoned 50 years ago. And when Mai Liu looks out of the window at the other buildings that are similar, the name Aori comes to his mind. Remembering when he was in school, in the same class he attended with normal students, he was the only blood iver. On the outskirts of the high school the BST arrives, due to a blood of ore entering the school killing several students. The class teacher arrives to evacuate all the students except Mai Liu, asking her to stay and hide at her father's request. Mai Liu complies by hiding, only to hear the screams of her classmates moments later. After that, he encounters the blood of ore named Rob who comes to kid him and takes Mai Liu up to the roof. On the roof, he waits for Mai Tenju himself to be present to negotiate. But what arrives is a drone through which they manage to communicate. Rod asks him to switch places with his son who is trembling with fear. But Mai Tenju denies the request and orders the cops to shoot when the target is available. Rod knows he will die, but first he tells Mai Liu the truth about how blood of ores are shunned by society, telling him that his teacher and classmates had betrayed him, as they left him alone to turn him in to save himself, and now it would be his father who would also turn his back on him. Rod releases Mai Liu, as he dies, Mai Liu falls into the void and tries to process what is happening to him, and as he falls, feeling in danger, he manages to activate his powers for the first time. In the present, Angie changes clothes with Cho Ifen. Cho Ifen reveals to her the real reason why she was sentenced to death, and that is that she murdered her husband. Because when she falls in love she wants that person to be only hers and asks Angie if she has any relationship with Mai Liu. On the other hand, Mai Liu is looking through the boxes a little thoughtfully, knowing that the place where they are is named after her old school. On the other hand, the agent looks at the photos of all the prisoners, who were blood of ores, who seem to be quite troublesome but who have suddenly been eliminated or disappeared within a month, which is not at all normal. The agent receives a call from his informant, who tells him that there are no records of the prisoners' bodies, or any trace of what happened afterwards. Among the photos he sees the one of Mai Liu, and decides to investigate further from a computer. However, when he begins to investigate the information is denied, making him think that perhaps Mai Tenju is trying to cover up appearances. It is then that the agent seeks information about Mai Liu's friends, realizing that they all come from the same orphanage. Upon learning this, the agent began to investigate the name of the orphanage, which was called the Public Welfare Orphanage, an orphanage for blood of ores. Meanwhile, Mai Liu walks around the building alongside Angie and Cho Ifen, making sure that there is no one else around to move on. Once the area is clear, Mai Liu asks them to follow behind him, keeping an eye on the surrounding area. As they walk Angie asks if they can get out of there, to which Mai Liu replies that the priority now is to find weapons and food. Angie notices that they are in the room and finds it strange, as they had not advanced far enough from the ducts and the warehouse to be on that floor. Mai Liu could not believe it either, but thinks that they are in a space-time intersection, that is, somewhere lost in time. Cho Ifen thinks he's joking, but Mai Liu immediately tells him that it's no joke, as they are at the intersection of past, present and future, although he's not sure, but it's the only thing that makes sense if you think of it that way. Angie asks if they are in another world, and Mai Liu affirms, mentioning that something weird is going on in the building. The boys move forward until they reach a place, where they can tell there was a monster presence by the shattered walls and scratches on the ceilings. In the cellar, the prisoners were barricaded in 
thanks to the help of a young hemomancer who covered the door they had opened earlier with the containers that served as cells. The monsters were banging loudly and it seemed that the young man could not hold out for long, so he called out to the prisoners for help. They hear him and go to the door to try to stop the monsters from entering, encouraging the others who stayed behind to help. Chen Fong doesn't hold out much hope as they will still break through if it comes to strength. Next to him a desperate prisoner says that there is no way to escape or beat them, so he decides that he will end his life using a grenade, before those monsters tear him to pieces. Hearing this, the other prisoners try to avoid him as they don't want to be hurt by the explosion, so they rush at him and manage to knock him down, after struggling so hard they don't manage to get the grenade away from him. But all of a sudden, a shotgun blast is heard, which kills the prisoner holding the grenade. Chen Fong takes the grenade while the others wondered what had happened. When they realize this, they all rejoice, while Win Kao is shocked and starts to cry for having killed someone. Chen Fong tells the prisoners to be quiet, as he listens to his friend crying. The other prisoners with nothing else to do run to help stop the door leaving Win Kao and Chen Fong alone. Chen Fong remembers being attacked by other children, just for the simple fact of being a blood of ore. Chen Fong remembers being beaten and how they said hurtful things to him. At that moment, Win Kao arrived and from behind attacked one of the children with a stick making them run. Chen gets up to ask him not to follow them, but out of nowhere come more children, who give them the beating of their lives, and then leave them aside. At that Win Kao starts crying while Chen Fong comforts him. In the present, Chen asks him to control himself and promises him that they will leave the place together. Chen Fong advances to the door to ask the young Hemoman to open it just a little to get out. The young man tells him that he is crazy and asks him not to disconcentrate him while some prisoners think to stop them. But Chen explains to them that at that rate, the monsters will end up entering. So he asks to use the grenade from before, stating that with that he will knock down the door somehow so that they don't have to force and block it. Mai Lu stops to make sure he is not surrounded by monsters, realizing that in that place there was a shooting or some battle, so it is dangerous to be there. Cho Ifen asks him if he can not use his powers to jump, but Mai Lu denies and states that his powers only let him create a point of gravity and fall into it. Also, that it works only within a radius of 10 meters, mentioning that he had limitations. Suddenly, Mai Lu looks back and notices that there was a monster about to attack them. Mai Liu grabs the girls by the arms and pulls them to prevent them from being eaten, while wondering where that monster came from, since he could not sense its presence. With no more time to lose he asks the girls to run away, while he with a metal bar tries to hit its head. But it is not so efficient since after several hits the monster does not fall, but goes to where the girls are, who run to hide. But out of nowhere appears another monster. Angie takes out a weapon to try to scare it away but nothing works, so they have to run while they find a way out. Cho Ifen finds a door on the other side. Angie manages to reach it, but Cho Ifen betrays her by pushing her and entering the door by herself. Angie is attacked by the monster being seriously injured. Mai Lu sees that, so she uses the other monster as transportation. Climbing on top of it and flying to where the other monster is, there she makes the two monsters collide to take Angie and leave. Cho Ifen realizes that there is no way out where he entered, so he goes back to help Mai Lu. Mai Liu comes out and sees Mai Liu being chased so she extends her hand to go with her. But Mai Liu flies away catching a metal tube and leaving Cho Ifen, who is left alone with a monster. Mai Liu tries to insert the tube into the ground to create a kind of stake, until after much effort she succeeds and embeds the stake into the monster. The monster makes a loud sound and falls on top of Mai Liu. Mai Liu manages to dodge it and is quite exhausted by the battle. In the cellar, Chen Fong was denied the possibility of opening the door, so he decides to climb, while the other prisoners mocked him. The young Himamante asks the others to be quiet, but they do not listen to him and continue to bother. Chen Fong continues climbing without paying much attention to them, but in an oversight he ends up holding on badly, which causes one of the containers to fall down. The prisoners dodge it avoiding the worst, while thinking if he did it on purpose to annoy them. Chi Fong manages to climb even higher, until he finds the head of the Angie robot. As he continues to advance the robot head emits a strange blue light. Chi Fong finds an exit, which is very narrow, but being the only one he tries to pass through. As he moves forward, the situation is complicated for him, due to the monsters that still insist on breaking down the door, forcing him to hurry so as not to be crushed, until he reaches the end, where it seems he would not be able to get out. However, a mysterious hand grabs him to pull him out of the place. On the other hand, Mai Lu tries to check Angie's wound, which turns out to be quite deep, so he tries to stop the bleeding. 
at that he sees the gun Angie was using and decides to take the weapon since they were very close to the monster he fought and was still alive, but trapped so he had to hurry. So he took the gun and took out a bullet to open it and extract the gunpowder to cauterize Angie's wound, sprinkling the gunpowder in the wound and igniting it with sparks that he created with a rock thus stopping the bleeding. Finishing with that, he tried to kill the monster but to his surprise it began to vanish right in front of him in a mysterious blue light. Mai Liu is shocked, but does not give it importance and returns to Angie. While Chen Fong manages to get out he meets the person who saved him. It was an unknown man who apparently was asleep and had just woken up with a headache and did not know where he was. Chi Fong asks him what he is doing in this place, and the man replied that he did not know. The man takes Chen Fong by the neck, asking where Mai Tenju was. Elsewhere, Mai Tenju was being interrogated by the higher-ups who were asking him for explanations for what he did, as they had received a signal from the Sapphire in Aori, which came from Mai Liu and they want to know why he gave the Sapphire to his son, to which Mai Tenju replies without further ado that it was necessary making the people present angry, who claim him as the Sapphire is very important. However, Mai Tenju mocks them by calling them elders for not understanding his research methods, angering those present who remind him that blood of ores are worthless. One of them asks him the reasons why he gave the sapphire to his son, but Mai Tenju tells him that there were none, only that he was the only candidate, considering all the possibilities to give him the sapphire. That's how they end the meeting making an exception this time and asks him to remember what his position is. Mai Tenju withdraws, asking his armed men from the BST who are in hiding to do the same. On the other hand, Mai Liu desperately tries to open a hole in the wall with a metal bar to find a way out. As he does so, he recalls the moments of the heist, how it collapsed after a miscalculation, and how they were sentenced to death. Out of frustration, the metal bar breaks causing Mai Liu to fall to the ground crying and tries to calm down as she doesn't want to let Angie die. Suddenly, he observes how the wound that his father gave him begins to emerge a strange blue light, and at that moment he realizes that his father implanted something, being the aforementioned sapphire. Mai Liu unknowingly activates the sapphire interface, a kind of artificial intelligence or advanced technology that works by command. To test, Mai Liu asks about the blood of ores, and sapphire begins to give her classified information about them and all the events that have been recorded as well. Mai Liu excitedly asks if blood transfusion between blood of ores is possible, to which Sapphire answers yes, mentioning that there are many reported cases of its effectiveness and safety, although in special cases there may be a kind of rejection, resulting in death highlighting that there are few cases, but even in transfusions of compatible blood types has occurred, that the recipient can go into a frenzy, so you should be careful when transfusing. Mai Liu asks to check his blood, to see if it is compatible for transfusion to a blood of ore. Sapphire does so and tells him that half blood of ore blood is similar to human blood, but can be transferred to blood of ores. Before ending the conversation, he seeks information about Aori, finding that Aori was formerly known as Aoka, and that it was the scientific research district, where the drug called Lullaby was successfully developed 43 years ago, which was intended to combat insomnia and which two years later had a side effect giving rise to the blood of ore. Because of this, the government imposed a total shutdown in Ayaka to isolate the blood of ores. That same year, the plan changed from quarantine to elimination, due to the increase of the opposition that rejected the blood of ores, thus creating a civil war. The government declared a state of emergency in order to use weapons of mass destruction in Ayaka, destroying it completely. Then the region of Ayaka was named as Aori. Mai Liu is surprised by all this information, so intrigued even more. He searches about the prisoners condemned to death, but this information requires a password. Unable to do anything else, he closes the sapphire interface and goes to Angie who is still unconscious. Without thinking, he bites his wrist to draw blood from it and gives it to Angie to drink. In the warehouse, Chen Fong frees himself from the mysterious man, who snatches the grenade he was carrying. Suddenly, a monster appears and is defeated by the mystery man in one blow, and thrown into the containers. The prisoners wondered what had happened and saw the mysterious man. The young Hemoman recognizes him and mentions that he is Lu Yao, a classified bloodiver, who has been declared an S-ranked criminal by the government. Lu Yao is quickly cornered by the other monsters, but he just smiles as he is about to have fun, finishing off all the monsters one by one. The prisoners, seeing how strong he is, cheer his name, even though he sees them as mere idiots. On the other hand, Mai Liu continued to pass his blood to Angie, but at a certain moment, Angie woke up frenetic and attacked him, biting him to take more of his blood, leaving him unconscious. Minutes later, a kind of spirit in the form of a woman approaches Mai Liu. 
Back in the warehouse, Li Xin appears attacking Lu Yao, but Lu Yao stops him with one foot, happy to see him again, which doesn't please Li Xin, who again attacks with his swords while Lu Yao dodges him easily, asking him to take it more seriously. Everyone is shocked to see how strong they are, and when they notice that they are headed towards them, they move out of the way to avoid getting involved. Lu Yao thinks that Li Xin is holding back so as not to hurt the prisoners, so he decides to mess with them and manages to distract him by stealing one of their swords and fighting alongside them. Li Xin nimbly pulls out another of his weapons, this time a machete of sorts, managing to break the sword that had been taken from him. However, Lu Yao squeezed him in a headlock and then tried to drink his blood. Lu Yao realizes that he has an explosive necklace and the young Hemomancer who until now was loved by the prisoners becomes hated, as he starts to show off to make Lu Yao like him, explaining that the necklace will only explode if it reaches zero, clarifying that it is a mechanism to prevent them from killing each other. Lu Yao is interested in him and asks him to explain more about the necklace. The young Hemomancer tells him about the prisoner who fought before and his necklace reached zero until it exploded. Lu Yao understands the situation, and with a single blow, kills the young Hemomancer which the other prisoners do not care, while Chen Fong realizes that Lu Yao's counter is not low but on the contrary, increased, implying that the number on his necklace is the number of people he has eliminated, having a total of 400. Mai Lu was in a dream where he is reunited with his mother, who asks him to be stronger and not to be afraid, encouraging him to go on. At that moment, Mai Lu wakes up and notices that Angie had also woken up, although she was still weak. However, he sees that the wall is about to fall down and carries Angie out of the building. Mai Lu walks through a narrow place and as he walks, Angie asks him what happened, saying that he only remembers drinking her blood. Mai Lu, not to worry her, tells her that she was probably dreaming, asking her not to talk anymore, as she must conserve energy. Mai Lu tells her about what he researched about the building, and that not far away is an infirmary to which they are headed. Angie asks him why he always saves her whenever she is in danger, to which Mai Lu replies that he remembers the time they met. Mai Lu remembers when they were children and first arrived at the orphanage, meeting Chen Fong and Win Kao, thinking that they were one of those kids who were a nuisance. Suddenly, Angie appears and when Mai Lu sees her, she remembers her mother, so she starts to cry. Angie notices this and goes to him to comfort him giving him his favorite toy and becoming friends. In the present, Mai Liu tells him that when he saw her, it reminded him of his mother, and that at that moment he swore he would protect her. Angie still doesn't believe him, asking if he is really an orphan. In the cellar, the prisoners try to open another door, managing to move it only a little. Liu Yao asks Li Xin what's going on, why he's there and what are those monsters he killed. But the latter only asks him to stop bothering him and follow him, and then leaves him alone. On the other hand, Chen Fong plans to look for Mai Liu and Angie together with Win Kao. Win Kao disagrees, as he thinks that Mai Liu is to blame for everything and had abandoned them as he saw her leaving with Angie and another girl through the air ducts. Chen Fong doesn't believe him, but Win Kao claims to have seen him, thinking that he was the one who eliminated those people after what happened at the bank. But Chen Fong asks him not to speculate on the matter. At that moment Liu Yao approaches to ask for the clothes that Chen was going to wear. The latter gives them to him without objecting. While Win Kao asks Liu Yao to help them get out of there. At the same time, Mai Liu manages to see a dragon in the area, so she decides to rest before continuing. Angie asks him to leave her, mentioning that there were more important things than her. At that, he takes the opportunity to ask her about the importance of her and her friends and why she kept going to the orphanage, mentioning that she wanted to know Mai Liu's secrets since she always put up a wall to keep anyone out. Mai Liu evades the question when he hears her coughing and asks her to stop talking, as her wound would have reopened. Angie again insists that she leave her to go back to Win Kao and Chen Fong assuring them that they are her family and she wants her to protect them, as they said that one day together they would tear down that wall and uncover Mai Liu's secrets. Meanwhile, Chen prevents anything from happening to Win Kao, clarifying that what he asks Liu Yao is not true, but Win Kao denies it, asking him to stay out of it. Liu Yao gives a kind of speech where he reminds them that they are prisoners sentenced to death and only the strongest will survive. At that, he opened the door that was so hard for the prisoners to move with one finger. The prisoners took his words, as if they were those of a leader, shouting his name and saying that they would do whatever it took to go after him. Among them was also Win Kao, who decides to follow the rest, even though Chen Fong reminds him that they must look for Angie. Win Kao refuses again and asks his friend if he is in love with Angie, which Chen Fong does not answer. Suddenly, Li Xin appears and tells him that they were together in a container with another girl 
and he saw how she used her powers to escape with two girls and since then he doesn't know anything about him and thinks that maybe he is dead. Maya Liu is holding Angie as he tells her his secrets. Maya Liu tells him that his father was the president of the BST. His mother was a normal human and he was a half-breed who was called the child of peace, and all information about him was erased after an incident. Since then his mother disappeared and his father acted as if he didn't care, to the point that their relationship got worse and worse. So he searched for clues to his mother's whereabouts, until one day he found a donation certificate, which was addressed to the orphanage. He wanted to go in there to find his mother, but ended up meeting them. As he finished counting, he realized that Angie was passed out. At the orphanage, the agent was there talking to the former administrator of the orphanage, who told him about the director who had passed away, so the real estate people had put the orphanage grounds up for sale. The agent shows him a photo of Mai Liu, asking about him, but she mentions that although he came to play with the other children, he was not part of the orphanage. The agent then asks him about a box full of stuffed animals, to which the former administrator replies that they were donations they made, as they did not receive help from the government because of the issue of accepting blood of his children. The agent asks her for a list of the names of the donors, while observing that inside a stuffed animal she took was a hidden microphone. Chen Fong asks about the duct through which Mai Liu escaped, but Li Xin tells him that he only saw him leave with the two girls using his hemomancy powers, which surprises Chen Fong, since he didn't know about his powers. Li Xin no longer answers his questions, getting tired of them and decides to look at the corpses of the monsters who were killed by Liu Yao. Chen apologizes, mentioning that he's not like that, he's just a bit confused. At that, the corpses of the monsters begin to disappear, and in one of them appears a human-shaped crystal. Chen Fong grabs it wondering what it was doing in the corpse, but Li Xin snatches it from him and at that the crystal starts to melt, Li Xin lets go of it but a part of it sticks to him and enters his body. After that, Li Xin offers to help him find Mai Liu, as he is a bit curious about him. Elsewhere, the agent in his office discovers that most of the stuffed animals are bugged and begins to play all the audios, surprised to hear the voices of Mai Liu and her friends talking about the sale of the orphanage and how they decided to start a plan to break into the bank and steal it. Despite this, they were all afraid that they would be arrested and that the plan would not work. But, Mai Liu encourages them, claiming that they will succeed. In Aori, Mai Liu accidentally drops Angie while running and as he picks her up, he begins to hear the voices of his friends, panicking and feeling guilty. Suddenly, a monster appears behind him, Mai Liu stands up to attack, ready to start the fight. Elsewhere, Li Xin and Chen Fong walk through the corridors where Mai Liu was before and finding no corpse, they knew he was still alive. Suddenly, they both hear a loud noise and when they open the doors, they find Mai Liu fighting a monster. Mai Liu tries to hit it with a rock, but it doesn't hurt him. The monster knocks the rock away and Mai Liu tries to knock him down and smash him against a pillar. However, in doing so he neglects Angie's body which is being stalked by another monster. Mai Liu gets up to save Angie, but before doing so he faints. Mai Liu opens his eyes with no memory of what happened. When he wakes up, he sees a girl who runs away when she sees him. Mai Liu wonders where she is and walks around the place meeting Chen Fong and Li Xin, and also Angie who is still unconscious. Chen Fong stands up in annoyance ready to hit Mai Liu, claiming that Angie was dead. Mai Liu is shocked, frustrated at not being able to protect her and decides to take Chen Fong's blows as punishment. In the middle of the fight, they both end up crying. At night, Chen Fong explains to Mai Liu what happened and how they found him, claiming that Li Xin helped them get out. Mai Liu, upon hearing this, thanks the man, who asks her why she didn't use her powers. Mai Liu replies that he had used it before. Chen Fong upon hearing that, asks him why he never told him that he was a hemomancer, to which Mai Liu remains silent. Chen mentions that he will go after Wing Kao, while Li Xin asks about Cho Ifen. Mai Liu says nothing, and Li Xin understands that he died. Finishing the conversation, they each go their separate ways. Chen starts crying while looking at a picture of him and his friends as children. On the other hand, Li Xin was feeding himself with his own knives. Meanwhile, Wen Kao was adapting and obeying Lu Yao's orders. Finally, the mysterious girl lies on top of Angie despite the big wound she has. In her room, Mai Lu sees Angie approaching, but thinks it is just her imagination as she disappears. However, Mai Lu decides to get up and goes to Angie's room to find her awake. Angie asks her where they are, at which point Chen Fong appears and hugs her while crying. After that, they explain what happened to Angie, stating that she was dead. She mentions not remembering anything, only that she was running away with Mai Liu from some monsters. The two boys ask her to rest, but she mentions that she remembers a blonde girl next to her. But when she tried to talk to her, she ran away. 
Chen Fong mentions that it is Ye and Mai Lu asks about her and Chen notices Ye's presence and asks her to come down. Seeing that Ye did not come down, Angie tried to speak softly to her, while Chen Fong did so in a threatening manner. Ye came down from the place kicking Chen while hiding behind Angie. Mai Liu notices that she is a blood of ore and asks where they found her. Chen begins to explain that when they were looking for them they passed a room, where a loud sound was tormenting them, causing them a headache. Li Xin identified where the sound was coming from entering a room which was filled with a yellow liquid that affected Chen Fong's senses. Chen Fong wanted to leave, but Li Xin kept moving forward until he found Ye lying on the floor. Li Xin seeing that everything was melting, asked Chen Fong to carry Ye as he had a phobia of women. Chen, in disbelief, lifts Ye up and leaves the place, while Chen is hit by some of the yellow liquid, forcing him to get rid of his jacket which ended up melting along with the room. Finishing the story, Mai Lu sees how well he gets along with Angie, and wonders how Angie had revived. Therefore, Mai Liu asks Chen Fong to take him to the room that had melted, as a monster he had killed earlier had also melted. At that, Li Xin mentions that the monsters Liu Yao had killed also melted. The next day, Mai Liu leaves with Chen Fong for Yea's room, while Li Xin stays behind to take care of Angie and Yea. On the way, Chen Fong asks Mai Liu for an explanation as to why she wants to go to that room, to which Mai Liu asks if she remembers when they woke up in the containers. Chen Fong affirms and Mai Liu mentions that he remembers that when they woke up he heard a loud sound that gave him a headache and he thinks it is the same sound from the room where Yea was. Therefore, she wants to go to the room as she thinks they might find information about the place and know a way out of Aori. Chen gets excited, but Mai Liu reminds him that it is only speculation. Later, Angie contacts Mai Liu to find out if everything is alright, to which Mai Liu replies that nothing has happened so far. Chen is surprised that the walkie-talkies work there, and Mai Liu mentions that it is thanks to Li Xin, who had found them. On the other hand, Li Xin did not know how to interact with the two girls, so he decided to walk away. However, before doing so, he asks Angie if she remembers anything or knows anything about the place, to which Angie denied. Seeing that, Li Xin asked her again if she knew why the robot had her resemblance. At that, Angie seeing Li Xin approach and grabbed Yea, but Li Xin didn't say anything but saw Yea's necklace had dropped to five. Meanwhile, Mai Liu together with Chen Fong continued to advance, until at a certain point they see two prisoners who are followers of Liu Yao. They both hide, but were given away by Angie calling out to them and mentioning Ye's condition. Mai Liu mentions to her that they can't go back and asks her to be careful, as she has a plan. After that, gunshots are heard and Mai Liu cuts off communication with Angie. They are both discovered and surrender without resistance to the pair of prisoners, asking them to take him to Liu Yao. On the other hand, Li Xin calms Angie down, mentioning that they may have found Liu Yao's followers, so Mai Liu will be fine. Angie asks who this Liu Yao is, and Li Xin replies that he is an S-ranked criminal who was captured by Mai Liu's father and sent to this place. Li Xin mentions that Liu Yapo probably wants to make an armed group to take revenge on the BST. Meanwhile, Mai Liu is taken to Liu Yao's place, explaining on the way to Chen what is going on with Ye. Mai Liu mentions that, in order to increase Ye's counter, they must bring monsters so that Ye can kill them. On the way, a worm-like monster traps one of the prisoners and they all start running, but the second prisoner is also trapped, as is Chen Fong but is saved by Mai Liu. On the other hand, Win Kao leads a group of prisoners, who try to take down a giant furrow, but they don't succeed, and it runs free until it reaches Win Kao. Mai Liu runs together with Chen Fong to find Liu Yao and ask for weapons, but at that moment they hear a gunshot and see Win Kao trying to kill the giant furrow. However, their efforts didn't work and Win Kao was going to be crushed by the furrow. But at that, Mai Liu flies in and saves him. Mai Liu is happy to see him, but Win Kao is not so happy. Mai Liu goes flying and with one kick he managed to knock him out. But everyone was surprised to see the monster transform into a child. The prisoners tie up the child, while Chen Fong tries to get Win Kao to come back to them. But he refuses. Mai Liu asks the prisoners about the boy's transformation but they don't know either. Then Win Kao arrives, asking what he wants from them. Mai Liu mentions that he came to see his boss, but now he is interested in what happened to the boy. Suddenly, a prisoner arrives carrying a strange rock, but it melts. After that Chen remembers the crystal he found with Li Xin. However, Win Kao orders the prisoners to be quiet, so that they can be searched and brought to Liu Yao. On the other hand, Anji was still worried about Mai Liu. However, Li Xin tells her that if they did meet other prisoners, she's probably already with Liu Yao. Also, that they can't attack each other or their necklace would reach zero and explode, and he doesn't think they'll forget that rule. 
After that, Li Xin starts to feel sick, pulling away from Angie and starting to feel severe pain as his body starts to sprout blades. Mai Liu is taken to Lu Yao on the way he notices that Chen is very distracted and he explains that he remembers that the crystal melted in Li Xin's hands and he is worried that it will transform and hurt Angie, so he proposes Mai Liu to return. But, Mai Liu tells him that they have already gone too far, so he prefers to negotiate with Lu Yao and return as soon as possible. When she arrives at Lu Yao's room, she sees him having fun with a girl. Mai Liu realizes that the girl is Cho Ifen. Lu Yao shows Mai Liu into his room. Mai Liu asks to borrow his weapons and tells him about what happened to Li Xin. Lu Yao tells her that it is a sign that her powers will awaken and asks her what she wants. Mai Liu tells him about the necklaces and that the counter will go down to zero by exploding if they are attacked, but also that it can go to zero if they don't kill monsters to raise the counter as he did. That's why he needs to borrow his weapons to help a girl who doesn't know how to fight. Lu Yao laughs asking why they want to save her, and Mai Liu mentions that she saved someone important to him, also because he thinks she might be a clue to solving what's going on in Aori. Lu Yao is interested in it, so he shows her the arsenal of weapons he has in storage. Mai Liu is surprised, although Lu Yao mentions that it's no big deal, as he plans to use that against Mai Tenjai asks Mai Liu again what his name was. Angie finds himself looking all over the place for Yea, and when he does, he notices that she is scared and hiding under the table as if something bad is going to happen. Meanwhile, Li Xin runs to attack him and Angie manages to hide and then grabs the radio. But then Li Xin starts spinning as more swords come out of his body, causing the place where they were hiding to collapse completely. Lu Yao gives them a briefcase full of weapons, and states that these weapons will not be free. Lu Yao asks Mai Liu if he is a hemomancer and what his powers are, to which Mai Liu responds by saying that he doesn't control his powers very well yet without telling them what they are. Lu Yao, not so convinced, so, as a thank you for telling him about Li Xin, wants to show him something and takes Mai Liu to the back of the building there was some kind of black hole. Lao Yao mentions that it's a barrier so they can't escape and tells him to be careful as the barrier can suck him in. Lao Yapo also mentions that to escape they must destroy it and asks him to work together, but Mai Liu refuses the offer. Lu Yao is disappointed and unexpectedly pushes Mai Liu against the barrier, causing Mai Liu to reveal his powers. Lu Yao is shocked and regrets that he was not his ally. Mai Liu tries to run away, but Lu Yao doesn't allow him to do so by attacking him. Despite everything, Mai Liu manages to grab the bag of weapons and Chen, who throws a smoke grenade to get out without being seen. Wen Kao hears the grenade and knows it is Mai Liu's work, but before he goes to see what is going on, Mai Liu's radio is activated, and he hears Angie's voice calling for help. After escaping from Lu Yao, Mai Liu lands in a safe place with Chen Fong making sure the explosives are okay. Chen asks him what kind of deal he made with Yuo Lao, but Mai Liu tells him none, mentioning that he wanted to help them, but Mai Liu refused his help, not because of him, but because of Cho Ifen, who apparently has the powers of mind reading and that could put Ye at risk and that's why he decided to get out of there as soon as possible. Besides, Mai Liu thinks that she has a grudge against him for having abandoned her before. Without giving any more explanations to Chen, they hurry to get there in time to save Angie. As they move forward, Mai Liu thinks about what Lu Yao told her about killing her father, as she is interested to know what kind of relationship the two of them have. On the other hand, the agent is in a car, together with his informant, who tells him that he has finished investigating the list of donors he had given him, from which he was able to get several false IDs, but from the records he was able to determine their identities. And among all those identities, there was one in particular, which was that of Shimon Guching, Mai Liu's mother. The agent is interested in that name, and the informant tells him that the strange thing about the case is that her donations continued, even after her disappearance. The agent, with all this information, doesn't understand why they killed all those people and feeling that something didn't fit, decides to smoke a cigarette. But seeing that he doesn't have any, he goes out to buy some. But just at that moment, a container falls from a building crushing the car. The agent realizes that a sniper is aiming at him, so he runs dodging the bullets until he hides in an alley, where he realizes that the BST people want to eliminate him. At that moment he takes out his gun to prepare himself, as two other agents appear in front of him and manage to wound him slightly. But the agent is more experienced and kills them. At night, Angie and Ye were hiding from Li Xin who was still out of control. Angie tries to calm Ye down by covering her mouth, but Ye doesn't understand what's going on and ends up screaming, drawing Li Xin's attention. Li Xin finds them, but first he eliminates several monsters that were behind them. That gives them time to run again, 
Angie uses the radio to communicate with Mai Liu. But who has the radio is Win Kao and he goes with a group of prisoners loaded with weapons and explosives to hunt a monster. With Liu Yao's permission, Angie keeps running along with Ye, but when they are in the open, Li Xin finds them and stops them. Angie tries to bring Li Xin back, but he doesn't seem to respond and tries to attack her. But just then, Mai Liu appears and takes him flying, crashing into a building. Mai Liu tries to get Li Xin to come back, but her words don't work either. Angie asks Chen how they found them, and he replies that it was because of the screams of the monsters Li Xin killed earlier. He also explains that Li Xin is out of control because his hematomancy had awakened, mentioning that when that happens they lose control. Mai Liu asks the others to run as he lures Li Xin, using his powers to fly away from him. Mai Liu tries to knock him unconscious but can't, so he keeps dodging his attacks. But Mai Liu is cornered and devises a plan, letting himself be hit and falling right in front of the building where the worm monster was, acting as bait. Mai Liu shouts to lure the monster and when it comes out, he dodges it, causing it to attack Li Xin and pull him into the building. Li Xin tries to run away, but is unable to do so and ends up being dragged away. Mai Liu apologizes to him and promises to save him later. Nintras Tanto, Chen Si Kurindo Khan Anji Wai Ye, Piro Alwar Los Gritos de Mai Liu, Si De Tian and Por Un Momento. Anji Lapai Quella explique to do el plan. Why Chen La Quinta Que Retuvirana Un Monstruo Para Que, Ye Aputa Matarlo Y Que Para Iso Userin Explosivos, Los Quills Ye Debra Activar. On the other hand, Mai Liu worries about Li Xin, as he doesn't hear anything but is surprised to see that he comes out of the building dragging the worm monster. He then pulls out several swords from his body and thrusts them into the worm monster, killing it instantly. Unbeknownst to him, an even bigger monster comes out of the building, which worries Mai Liu, as it was the monster they had trapped for Yea, and he runs to try to stop Li Xin. Yea stops and starts to cry. Chen Fong stops and realizes that Yea can detect them. Ye doesn't want to go any further, so without wasting any more time Chen Fong carries her to where Mai Liu is. Angie had already arrived and watches as Li Xin was about to fight the monster, but Mai Liu using her power flies up to Li Xin preventing him from hitting him. However, the monster with its tongue grabs Mai Liu's foot, knocking him to the ground. Li Xin then changes his target and moves towards Mai Liu trying to thrust his sword at him. However, the monster crosses and receives the blow. Mai Liu takes the opportunity to roll and grab a sword, while Li Xin again launches another attack against him. But this time he was pierced by the sword that Mai Liu took. Mai Liu is surprised, as Li Xin's body is covered by some kind of armor and the sword could not destroy it. Therefore, Mai Liu moves away and Li Xin when he lets his guard down is caught by the monster. Li Xin begins to spin until it looks like a tornado, cutting the monster's tongue and part of its skin. Mai Liu comments that he has lost his mind, so he must stop Li Xin or Ye will die. Mai Liu uses the monster and throws him into the tornado. Although Shen ends up cutting him down, Mai Liu takes advantage of the space he left open to enter and knee Li Xin to the ground. The wounded monster returns to its hiding place in the building. Li Xin gets up and launches a flurry of attacks with his sword, but Mai Liu dodges them all. Angie notices that Mai Liu is getting tired and decides to get Li Xin's attention, who runs straight at her to thrust his sword at her. But Angie I is saved at the last second by Chen Fong, who pushes her away and takes the blow. Chen Fong asks him to run away with Ye, while he stops him by taking his sword but Li Xin drops it to give him the final blow. And again, Mai Liu uses his powers to stop Li Xin and flies away, while he tells the others to leave without him and slams Li Xin into a building. Chen Fong tells Angie to hurry as they must leave, but Angie doesn't want to leave him. Chen Fong reminds him that he is doing this so that they can leave and seeing that Angie doesn't want to, Chen calls him out and asks if he wants Mai Liu's death to be in vain. Angie sees Ye pull out the grenades and thinks of using them to kill Li Xin. But Chen Fong slaps him for his stupid idea, as the explosion could also hit Mai Liu. Angie, still firm in his resolve to help Mai Liu. Meanwhile, Mai Liu continues to fight Li Xin, who doesn't look tired, but Mai Liu does, so he runs to get away and rest. At that, Angie returns with a grenade in his hand saying he would save him. Mai Liu asks her to throw the grenade at the spot he indicated and Angie throws the grenade. Mai Liu succeeds, but what he didn't count on is Li Xin redirecting the grenade, deflecting it so that it explodes right next to Mai Liu. 
Angie, seeing that Mai Liu is about to die, activates his hemomancy and returns the grenade to Li Xin, which explodes in his face. The explosion reaches Mai Liu, who falls to the ground while Li Xin falls unconscious. Angie runs to help Mai Liu and when he arrives he notices that Mai Liu is unresponsive. At that moment she sees how Li Xin gets up from the ground and slowly approaches Angie who takes a sword and tries to stab him. But at that moment someone stops her, and when she looks carefully, she realizes that it is Mai Liu, who stood up and did not let her hurt Li, who had fainted. Angie starts to cry, but Mai Liu reassures her that it's all over now. Angie drops the sword, while Mai Liu thanks her for saving him. Later, Li Xin was still unconscious. Mai Liu assures Li Xin would be fine. Chen Fong thinks it is better to tie him up. On the other hand, Angie feels guilty that she tried to kill Li Xin and put them all in danger, but Mai Liu comforts her by telling her that she was not wrong, and that thanks to her both he and Li Xin are still alive, because if she had left as he asked, one of them would be dead, causing Chen Fong to now feel bad because he did want to respect Mai Liu's decision to escape with Angie, making it clear that he was injured and wouldn't be much help. Mai Liu asks Angie for the radio, telling them that they must hurry to place the explosives in the building to save Yaya. As Mai Liu uses the radio, he explains that he will enter the building to place the explosives, hoping that no monsters will attack him and if that happens, he can escape using his powers. Chen Fong doubts that such a large building can be brought down, but Mai Liu is always has a plan asking them to detonate the explosives at 12 o'clock no matter what. Later, Mai Liu enters the building and places the explosives one by one on the building's columns, creating a circuit so that all the explosives detonate at the same time. Mai Liu wonders if he will be able to escape when that happens. At that, he notices a hole in the roof so he decides to investigate. When he climbs up he finds an old place, full of books and realizes that it is a library. However, the library had no traces of the monsters having entered there and as he walks up he finds the dead body of a person. On the other hand, Angie, Chen Fong and Ye were waiting for him outside, feeling uneasy about the quietness of the atmosphere, and seeing that 30 minutes had already passed, they began to worry. Angie also thinks about Li Xin who still hasn't got up and then sees a stone that moves by itself, having the same sensation as when he threw the grenade, which moved by itself a moment later. Because of that feeling he stretches his arm towards the stone, and realizes that he can move it thanks to his power. In the building, Mai Liu wonders what could have happened to the decomposing person, and upon closer inspection he realizes that he is not wearing a necklace, meaning that he is not a blood of her, concluding that he was an Aori resident who was not evacuated. Mai Liu among the books finds a pocket watch, which when he sees it he is surprised remembering when he was a child and he was coming out of a blood test. Mai Liu was looking for his mother, he meets another person, a co-worker of his mother's who gives him a pocket watch. Returning to the present, Mai Liu sees that it is the same watch and intrigued, he decides to look for more things, until in a drawer he finds a red book, which turns out to be a diary. In the diary, they tell how scientists had discovered a cave where there were many insects which they thought they could control. However, the situation got out of hand and they had to take more people to Aori. In the book he notices a password and decides to activate Sapphire's interface to look for more information. Sapphire shows a bunch of pictures of the people who were taken to Aori. Among them is one of Angie when she was just a child. Mai Liu decides to investigate further and sees how the BST was involved in the experiments by looking at a picture of him next to his mother and father. Suddenly, Mai Liu is attacked by a monster that managed to sneak into the library. Mai Liu manages to escape using his powers and then readies the detonator. However, he is trapped by the giant monster and then another monster arrives and fights with the giant monster for its prey. Outside the building, Angie and the others hear the monster's roars, so Angie decides to go inside to help Mai Liu. Angie arrives before the monsters and sees Mai Liu in danger. Mai Liu asks her to leave, but Angie, tired of running away, uses her powers to manipulate the shadows on the ground and surprises Mai Liu. Outside Chen Fong waits impatiently, when suddenly a van appears with three prisoners, who come from Liu Yao. The prisoners recognize Chen Fong, for his exploits in the warehouse and for having escaped from Liu Yao's base, and ask him not to resist because they are going to capture him and they don't want to hurt him. Suddenly, Win Kao appears and asks him what he is doing there. Meanwhile, Angie struggles to hold off the monsters while Mai Liu finishes placing the remaining explosives. Angie is attacked by another monster, but Mai Liu manages to rescue her to get out of the place, while the monsters follow them. 
Mai Liu and Angie manage to get out meeting the others. Without wasting time Angie turns back to use her powers, trying to stop the monster from leaving the building and stops it with the shadows. Quickly Chen Fong gives the detonator to Ye to activate. Once activated, the explosions begin and Mai Liu grabs Angie to pull her out of the blast radius. The building explodes and collapses completely, raising the number on Ye's necklace. Wen Kao takes his gun and goes towards Mai Liu, who is unconscious after the explosion while Angie was trying to lift him up. Wen Kao, as he moves forward, remembers the day of the robbery, just at the moment when Angie activated his necklace and realizes that Angie had been the culprit of the murders committed to the people in the bank. Wen Kao, who claims him for the murders, Angie does not know what he is talking about. However, due to the explosion, several portals open and monsters start to come out. Wen Kao takes Angie away, leaving Mai Lu behind, while Chen Fong flees with Yea. The monsters finish off the prisoners left nearby, and another group of monsters go after Mai Liu's body. Suddenly, Li Xin arrives and drags Mai Liu away as he is finishing off the monsters. Angie goes back to help, saving Chen Fong who is about to be eaten. Li Xin, on the other hand, can't keep fighting and one of them tries to eat Mai Liu, but Li Xin sacrifices his arm to prevent that. Suddenly, Liu Yao arrives with his army of prisoners and they help to eliminate some monsters. Liu Yao realizes that Mai Liu is dead and that Li Xin is wounded, so he decides to kill him, but Angie using his powers stops him. Due to the noise of the explosions, the dragon from the previous chapters reappears, but ends up being defeated by a blow from Liu Yao, who without much effort managed to free himself from Angie's shadows to hit the dragon with an accurate blow. After defeating him, a mysterious figure appears, while Ye takes advantage of the fact that no one is watching Mai Liu, and revives him. The mysterious figure takes the form of the woman who would have given Mai Liu the pocket watch when he was a child, leaving the story unfinished and ending the anime.